customer has come to you and they want an RV082 put into their business and they would like dual WANs, dual WAN connections to be set up. So we're going to go ahead and quickly draw this out. So what they've asked for you is they've asked that you're going to have two. They want dual WANs so that at half of the year, especially during the peak parts of their business time when their web servers is being really hammered, they would like this input aggregated. So they're going to contract with two ISPs. And the first ISP is going to give them 10 megabits per second. And the second ISP is going to give them 30 megabits per second. Now during the rest of the year, they want this configured as just a backup. So when they need it, it's there. But during Christmas season and during holiday sections, they want this reconfigured so that it is actually uh, aggregates the two values. And so we should get something like 40 megabits per second. The business owner is also going to set up a public Wi-Fi and we're going to set up a access point on one of these ports and he is concerned about tampering with the unit. So he's also asked you to set up a syslog server. He's got a VM server over there and he would like you to set up a syslog server so that it will notify him. He's always aware should anyone get in the router, tamper with, change any configurations he can see if any policies are being violated are are there are any attack issues or any suspicious activity on the WAN in regard to his router that he should be aware of. So I'm going to also show you how to set up a syslog service and we'll pipe the error messages and audit information and configuration changes to that syslog server. So he's always aware of what's going on with his network equipment. So let's begin setting up our router like the business owner has asked us to do. We brought in an RV082. We've connected it up. We're getting some of it situated. We see that we have one internet provider connected up to WAN1. Notice in WAN2 we have no IP address, no default gateway, no DNS, and basically it's just sitting there. It is enabled. We can see up here it is enabled, but it is not working at this time. So we're going to go over here to System Management and open that up and we'll get into the dual WAN section. We can set it up two ways. We can set it up in the load balancing mode and or the smart link so that it has a backup. Well, we're going to first start off with the backup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up both Ethernet connections, both ISPs into both WAN connections, and then we'll set it up for backup and we'll test it to make sure that it, it works right. I'm going to go over here and connect the second WAN port. So we now have two WAN connections in our system. And I want us to go to I want us to go to the log area where we can begin to look at system statistics. So we're going to pull that up so we can really look at the system. So here we can see both our WAN1 and WAN2. We can see they're connected, they're ready. WAN1 has been set up as the primary connection. WAN2 is the backup. So if I reach over there and unplug uh, WAN 1, the primary, we should see a failover on WAN 2. So I'm going to do that. Now I've dropped my WAN 1 completely out. I'm going to refresh this so you can actually see it take place. And we see it. Uh, it's nice. We see WAN2 connected. Notice it picked up the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, the DNS information, and notice packets are beginning to flow automatically on our router. So there we saw that backup work very, very well. So when you analyze this smart backup, it's not so good that you could download a file, lose one ISP provider, and it would it would never even skip a beat. It would probably have to restart the download. But for all practical web surfing and things of that nature, your users are probably not even going to notice that you lost a WAN link. So let's begin taking a look at the load balancing feature, also known as auto mode. 
We have to watch this mode section here. We're going to make sure we save our changes. We notice our mode is now auto. First thing that we want to do is go configure each WAN input. In our business scenario, we remember we had a 10 megabits ISP and a 30 megabits ISP. In order for it to load balance, we have to configure it. So let's begin the process. And in, in my case, the demo, I'm doing this at home. So I don't really have two separate ISPs, but I want to walk you through the process so you'll understand. Let's begin by hitting the configuration. And we're going to set up our upstream and downstream based on the ISP. In order to accurately set up my upstream and downstream kilobits per second value, I'm going to bring in speed test and I'm going to run that on my ISP provider. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. What we want is download speed and upload speed and we see about 30 megabits download speed. And now we'll begin the upload test and we're probably around 2 megabytes per second on the upload test. So now once I have those values, I can set up my upstream and downstream values. And I have done that already. My upstream, uh, my upload speeds are about 2000 kilobits, which is the same as two megabits. And my download stream, my download is 30 megabits, which is 30,000 kilobits per second. These are my ISP maximums and that allows the load balancing to understand that when this interface is is maxed out to then shift the traffic to the other ISP. So you want to make sure you configure this for both ISPs correctly. So once we've made those settings, we're going to slide down here and make sure you save or all of your work is for not. Now we're going to go to WAN2 and set that one up. And because I'm at home and I'm using the, my internal network and one ISP to do the demo, Mine is the same, but yours would be different. So if you're setting up two ISPs with two different bandwidths delivered to you, to your business, you're going to have to set these up and make sure you set them up correctly. So now we have configured both WAN connections for the appropriate ISP bandwidths and the load balancing once one is exceeded, then it will automatically switch traffic to the other. And so you get, you probably won't get exactly a aggregate of 40 megabits per second, but you should get a definite improvement over just one connected. So I move to the log section and I'm opening up system statistics and you can see the traffic on both. Notice that both now have IP addresses, subnet masks. They both recognize the gateway. They're both assigning DNS information to their interface and traffic is flowing and you can refresh if I pull enough information, you can see both of them will work. And you can see in the picture, we do have both connections made. So this allows an aggregation of both WAN connections to the business property. Another requirement that the business owner has asked you is he's concerned about tampering with his router. And he's asked you to set up a syslog server so he can monitor events, audit security, see if anyone is tampering with the router as well as any outside traffic that might be malicious. So what is syslog? Well, first of all, it's a standard. Syslog is a standard for computer data logging and it is used extensively in network type equipment, uh, firewalls, routers, some printers, many devices work with syslog. Keep in mind it's a standard. And it kind of separates the software that generates messages and audits and security information from the, the software that stores it and creates reports and analyze it. So syslog is a standard. It allows software developers on either side to develop their software based on a standard for events and logs. So the first thing we have to understand about syslog to use the standard syslog, we must have equipment that supports it. In other words, equipment that generates events and logging alerts based on the syslog standard. And then we need software to collect that information and create reports, email us when there's a, 
a failure, denial of service attack, or something of that nature. So we need equipment that generates the messages based on the syslog standard, and we need software to collect it and generate the reports, alerts, and manage it. There are many companies, and here's one, that create the software that will collect the syslog information from devices such as routers and firewalls and will manage it for you, create alerts, do all kinds of things with that data. This is a Windows based software that does the same. It's all based on the syslog standard and you can install it. There are free open source versions, there's free versions and they all do the same. They all are based on the syslog standard. Spiceworks is another open source package that's free and you can actually do many other things but it does has a syslog software to capture the messages from equipment such as your router, your firewalls, things of that nature and manage it, create reports, alert you when there's... So first of all this router, the RV082, does support the syslog standard and it will generate all the events if you enable the syslog and you point it to the IP address of a device that supports the syslog system or the collection software, it will generate, as it generates messages, alerts, and things of that nature, it will send it to that software. So while I've been doing this demo, I've actually have downloaded What's Up Gold syslog server on my demo PC. And it runs as, you can run it as a service, or you can run it every time your computer boots up. And it basically uses a UDP port that all syslog standard devices send their messages to. And if you have the software on your PC or a syslog s software on your server, it will collect that data. And then the software can then alert you, etc. So here you can see I've captured a number of things. I have logged on. This morning I logged on with the user admin account. You can see that I changed some WAN connections while I was doing the demo and it's collecting that information in this software package. I can set up rules. I can have this software alert me when certain conditions exist. Notice I have severity. I have information as to what generated the event. I can see who generated that event. In this case 172.16.0.1 is my router. So my router is generating this information. So if I had a firewall device, router, printer, and I had them all sending their syslog alerts and logging and information to my syslog server, which is simply software on my PC, then I could see who is sending it and what is the event. You can download the What's Up Gold syslog server for Windows. Now Linux has many of these very similar type packages. If you're a network administrator and you have literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of devices, this software probably will not work for you. You're going to have to bump up to more enterprise type syslog software. But for home and for a small business, this might work real well. I've cleared out my events in my syslog server or the software that I've installed to collect those events from my router. And let's go ahead and generate some so you can see it actually works. Pretty cool. You can do this at home if your router supports syslog standard. You can install this software and collect the data and actually keep an eye on what's going on to your network. One thing that it does is it sends any changes at configuration. So I'm going to change from load balancing to smart backup and make this save. And I'm going to bring my syslog server over here where you can see it. And you can see that it now has capture those event changes and so it's warning me that there have been changes and it tells me what has been done so this is very cool now I'm going to go ahead and disable one of my WAN connections and so I should have a failover since I'm in the smart link backup failover mode so I'm going to pull this out and drop that on the floor and I should see a syslog error indicating that something has happened. Notice the WAN connection is down and that WAN 2 has been changed. The focus now, the traffic has been moved to WAN 2. And so without even knowing, I can just watch the syslog or I can set this software to 
alert me via email, to send a text message, depending on the features of your Syslog software. So you can see this is very, very nice. So what kind of information are we going to send? If you enable your Syslog server, all the major events are automatically sent. Now you can also, if you want to send your log files via email, you can also set that up. And you can see I've got my email set up here. Down here, I've got different logs that I want, different logs that I want sent to me via email if I want to use email. But in this case, I'm using the, the Syslog system, the standard. I've got Syslog server software installed on my PC. 